We can see the high-resolution model in Maya now, which we have to place at an individual layer. This way we can compare the new, edited model with the original one later on. We should insert a prefix for the names of the objects to prevent having multiple objects with the same name and not knowing which one is which. We can do that in the import settings too. We exported a voxel remeshed version out of ShapeLab in FBX, where the model now has an equal surface with great structure and even topology. This model is perfect for Maya's retopology tools. We can see the new model and easily compare it with the old one. Next up, we have to test the retopology tools, and by changing the parameters, we can set the density of the quad mesh to be created, and how much the new topology should stick to the original shape, how much the quads should have equal proportions. The default settings at the topology section are usually good for organic shapes, but if we want a much more uniform result, following shapes similar to a circular cross-section, then it is worth increasing the uniformity of the model. In this last version, we can see that the face uniformity is set to 1, so the last example has almost perfectly regular rectangles. Topology regularity gets rid of the stars in the geometry. If we decrease this number, we would have more stars, but a more precise topology as well. Next up, we'll edit other parts of the model. At the retopologize function, the target face count obviously sets how many polygons there will be, and with the tolerance, we can set the percentage of how much the target count can divert from what we've set. We can run the retopologize function on all the parts now. In our experience, any geometry from ShapeLab is extremely compatible with Maya's retopologize functions, and there are few or no errors at all. Even with complex elements like the head part here, the conversion ran perfectly. In Maya 2024, there are a lot of new updates. Reform's algorithm is 30% quicker. We can use symmetry on the model or run a quick check before the conversion. By keeping the original geometry, we can run multiple versions of the function and see the difference. Some elements are best to be separated before conversion and rejoin after. Currently, there is no way of converting multiple objects, so we have to do it one by one. One of the advantages of this is that we can manipulate the target face count of each element, therefore we have even more control over topology. If we are pleased with the results, we have to select all the objects and use the delete by type history command. This way, the software will not store and continuously calculate the conversion.
if we're finished with all the objects, we are going to end up with approximately 250,000 polygons on the fully finished model compared to the 7 million that we started out with. We can now work on the low resolution model further on with Maya's polygon editing and manual retopology tools.